Hello to all. Today we are going to discuss about the genetic engineering history. Okay, this is the part two. Earlier we have discussed the part one, in which we have discussed the introduction of the biotechnology and its definitions. Okay, today we will be discussing about the history of the genetic engineering. Okay, the most modern technique of the genetic engineering is the recombinant DNA technology. Okay. In the previous video, you have seen that we can modify the genetic constitution of any cell by the introduction of the foreign DNA into it, right? And that technique was called as the genetic engineering. Okay. So the most modern technique of the genetic engineering, which is used at the present time, is the recombinant DNA technology, which is in short written as small r dash DNA, means recombinant DNA. Okay. So the most modern technique of the genetic engineering used at the present time is the recombinant DNA technology. Now the question is that what is a recombinant? As we know that recombinant is a combination of two different things. Okay, it's called as recombinant. Means recombinant DNA is formed by combining two different DNAs of the organisms. Okay, what is recombinant DNA? A recombinant DNA is formed by combining the two different DNAs of the organisms okay is called as the recombinant DNA and you must also know that who is the father of the genetic engineering so the father of the genetic engineering is Paul Berg there is a big confusion in the students that uh, that the father of the genetic engineering is Paul Berg or it is Harbour, Herbert Boyer and Stanley Cohen so you must remember this thing that the father of the genetic engineering is the Paul Berg, not the Herbert Boyer and the Stanley Cohen. Okay. Now, uh, why the Paul Berg is called as the father of the genetic engineering? So in the year 1972, the Paul Berg used the restriction enzymes. In within a couple of minutes, we will be uh, we will be saying that uh, the restriction enzymes are the molecular scissors which are used in the genetic engineering. So in 1972, Paul Berg used the restriction enzymes or the molecular scissors and the DNA ligase enzymes. DNA ligase enzyme is the joining enzymes. So the cutting enzyme is the restriction enzyme. It cuts the DNA and the two DNAs are joined together with the help of the DNA ligase enzymes. Okay. So in 1972, the Paul Berg used the restriction enzymes as well as the DNA ligase enzyme to create the first recombinant DNA molecule, okay, means first RDNA molecule. What they did, he combined, he combined the DNA isolated from the monkey virus SV40. Again, I am repeating, he combined DNA from a monkey virus SV40, right, with that of the lambda virus and constructed the recombinant DNA. But in the NCRT also, there is uh, there is no explanation about the Paul Berg. The straight started from here. Okay, so just see here that Herbert Boyer, Herbert Boyer, and Stanley Cohen took the Paul Berg work a step further and introduced the recombinant DNA into the bacterial cell. Means the Paul Berg has not given the information that how the recombinant DNA formed will be introduced into the host cell. But the Herbert Boyer and the Stanley Cohen took the work of the Paul Berg one step ahead and introduced the recombinant DNA into the bacterial cell. Okay. So, the Paul Berg is also related to the construction of the recombinant DNA and the Herbert Boyer and the Stanley Cohen is also associated with the construction of the recombinant DNA. In NCRT, it is written that the first recombinant DNA was constructed by the Herbert Boyer and the Stanley Cohen. Right? So, Herbert Boyer and Stanley Cohen took Burke's work a step further and introduced recombinant DNA into the bacterial cell. Genetic engineering as direct transfer of DNA. What is genetic engineering? So, genetic engineering is what? Genetic engineering as direct transfer of the DNA from one organism to another was first accomplished by the Herbert Boyer and the Stanley Cohen. What did the Herbert Boyer and the Stanley Cohen say? 
that genetic engineering as a way of the direct transfer of the DNA from one organism to another organism. Okay. Now, Boyer and Cohen constructed the recombinant DNA in 1972 by isolating a antibiotic resistant gene. They isolated a antibiotic resistant gene by cutting out the piece of the DNA with the help of the restriction enzyme which are also called as the molecular seizures from a plasmid which was responsible for conferring the antibiotic resistant genes. Okay, what they did? They constructed the recombinant DNA in 1972 by isolating an antibiotic resistant gene by cutting out a piece of the DNA with the help of the restriction enzyme which are called as the molecular seizures from a plasmid which was responsible for conferring the antibiotic resistance. Okay, now the piece that was cut with the help of the restriction engine, the cut piece of the DNA was then linked with the plasmid DNA, right? And this plasmid DNA here acts as a vector. This plasmid DNA acts here as a vector to transfer the piece of the DNA attached to it. Means what they did, they took the piece of the DNA and they linked that piece of DNA with the plasmid DNA. Plasmid DNA is the vector DNA which will carry this piece of DNA into the host cell. Okay. Now, it means what is a vector? Vector deliver an alien piece of the DNA. Alien means foreign DNA, target DNA, passenger DNA, source DNA, desired DNA, foreign DNA, whatsoever. So, vector deliver alien piece of DNA into the host organism. So, they took a antibiotic resistant gene which was isolated from a plasmid which was responsible for antibiotic resistance and they linked that with a vector called as the plasmid. So what will be formed? The desired DNA, this cut piece of DNA was the gene of interest was actually the desired DNA that was joined with the plasmid DNA to form what? A recombinant DNA. Okay. One more thing. How they linked it? So they linked the two DNAs. They linked the two DNA for the construction of the recombinant DNA with the help of a joining enzyme then that joining enzyme was known as what the DNA ligase. So always remember the cutting enzyme is the the cutting enzyme is the restriction enzyme and the joining enzyme is the DNA ligase enzyme means we can cut we can cut the foreign DNA or the alien DNA and the vector DNA with the same restriction enzyme but if you want to join the two pieces that is the desired DNA and the vector DNA then we'll be using a joining enzyme known as the DNA ligase and one more thing that this Herbert Boyer and Stanley Cohen isolated the plasmid from a bacteria called as Salmonella typhi murium okay they isolated the plasmid from Salmonella typhi murium okay now the new DNA constructed was in vitro in vitro means what in some utensil not inside the body in vitro means synthesis of anything outside the body in laboratory. So the new DNA constructed was in vitro and was called as the recombinant DNA. So the credit for the perfect formation of the recombinant DNA goes to Herbert Boyer and Stanley Cohen. That's why in NCRT also it is written that the first recombinant DNA was formed by Herbert Boyer and Stanley Cohen. When this DNA is transferred into E. coli, when this recombinant DNA is transferred into E. coli, what is E. coli? E. coli is a bacterial cell and here it is acting as a host cell. So they also said, Herbert Boyer and Stanley Cohen also say, said that when the recombinant DNA is formed, then that recombinant DNA is transferred or introduced into the E. coli, which is acting as a host cell. It could, as soon as the recombinant DNA will enter into the E. coli, it could replicate using what? the new host DNA polymerase enzyme because we know very well that DNA polymerase enzyme is the enzyme responsible for the replication. So as soon as we will be introducing the recombinant DNA into the E. coli which is acting as the host cell, what will happen? The recombinant DNA will replicate inside the host cell by using the host cell DNA polymerase enzyme or the replication enzyme and make its multiple copies means inside the host cell, inside the E. coli, many copies of the recombinant DNA will be formed. And this ability, this ability of making the multiple copies is called as the cloning. 
So this ability to multiply the copies of antibiotic resistant gene means what was the gene of interest? Our gene of interest, our desired DNA, our passenger DNA was actually the DNA consisting of the antibiotic resistant gene which we have combined with the vector DNA. So our gene of interest was the antibiotic resistant gene. So what will happen? That that antibiotic resistant gene will form multiple copies in the E. coli. So this ability to multiply copies of antibiotic resistant gene in E. coli was called as the cloning of the antibiotic resistant gene in the E. coli by which multiple copies of this antibiotic resistant genes will be formed. Okay. So this was how the Paul Berg and the Herbert Boyer and Stanley Cohen first of all constructed the recombinant DNA. The most important technique at present used in the genetic engineering is the recombinant DNA technology. In the coming time, we'll be making a lot of videos regarding the recombinant DNA technology and the genetic engineering. So keep watching. Hope so you have liked this video. Thanks a lot. If you want to take the screenshot of this video, you can take.